the channel you're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thank you for joining me, viewers. I appreciate the fact that you've come in. I'm sure many of you are here for a reason, um, to have a good listen, to see some insights and spiritual understanding from somebody that's now just serving as a, sort of more or less a stealth minister, I suppose, out of the church and all the rest of it and just looking at life from a different perspective but still with decades and decades of ministerial experience and life experience and relationships experience this one's going to be heavy guys bear with me we are programmed and program the people that we with when you plug a USB cable into a computer um, it'll send to you the device upload and things will go automatically through the motions and then you'll have a device uploaded into your computer when you have sex with a woman when the man plugs into the woman I know that sounds terrible but when his USB port plugs into the woman and she allows that to happen there's spiritual and soul transmissions taking place between the two. Massive ones, deep ones. And I'm going to read some scriptures and then we're going to get into it. Don't you know that your bodies are a part of the body of Christ? Now there's that connection already. Christ is generating himself into you and you are receiving from him you're receiving his righteousness and he's paid for your sin is it right for me to join part of the body of Christ to a prostitute no it isn't I'll tell you why because you're undoing the USB Holy Spirit port that Christ is pumping into you you're you're jamming it you're allowing a Trojan virus or multiple pro you know your computer can get a trojan virus and wreck things and you know it's can get sorted out and this and that but when you get multiple viruses man that thing's gonna crash and sometimes it's just unfixable well <clears throat> the sad thing for the prostitute and we know this from when jesus cast the demons out of the prostitute when people sleep with a lot of people, all those different transitions, transmissions that happen between her and those other people can equal thousands and thousands of um, megabytes, as it were, in human soul terms of information from people that haven't even connected with that woman in terms of all those personalities and characters that that woman's allowed into herself they will transmit across into the man that's sleeping with her in other words the more people she sleeps with the more personalities and characters and transmissions and um, problems and things that come from those people transmitting into her will transmit into the next person and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse that's why a lot of prostitutes are drug addicts substance dependent trying to numb all the voices and all the micro sounds and interferences that she's allowed into her soul from these strangers um, and then all those personalities and characters with all their their flaws and dark characteristics and things that go wrong they can be passed on to you and they are passed on to you if you sleep with a prostitute now the Lord's trying to work through the middle of all this and he will and he can but I think what the writer is trying to say here is, why complicate things because of lust? What's the answer to this? The answer to this is to have one partner. 
and for that partner that you're with to have one person and to live a happy and wholesome life between each other without contaminating each other with other people's spirits and souls and harms and dark characteristics. People don't realise all the transmissions that take place when they connect sexually. It's like a com- it's so much like a computer, it's not funny, but there's no protection from the viruses, the spirit and soul and bodily viruses that transmit between the two people when they have intercourse. The only way you can protect yourself um, from all this trouble is through exclusivity. And that's what the Bible's trying to teach. Verse 16. Do you not know that a man who does that becomes part of her body? Now, it's more inclusive than that. You're not just part of her body. You're part of her soul supply and spirit supply as well. Through the transactions that take place, the transmissions that take place through the entry of the man into the woman. The scriptures say the two of them will be like one person so there's an AI there's an AI transaction transmission there's transmissions taking place from that person soul and spirit and all the characteristic flaws and things like that that come with that from one to another. And a lot of people wonder why, how come when I met that person they were so easy to get along with? Then after a while, things seem to change. What you don't want to understand and what you just don't want to accept is the fact that the chemistries, the, the transmissions taking place between the two people are creating a a, a chemical, as it were, soul-spirit reaction, and everyone is different. Now, limerence, limerence, light limerence, L-I-G-H-T, that takes place when you meet somebody, covers up these transitions and transactions. They just take place, and the The outcomes of those transmissions and transactions are procuring in the soul and the spirit of those people as time goes by, right? It might be a day, it might be a week, it might be a month, it could be six months. But the L-I-G-H-T limerence is working through these early phases. Now some people, they will run two people at once if they can get away with it. Um, Jumping between one to another and that's why it's wrong because if one person's not aware of this, then they're transmitting a foreigner into this other person by way of a Trojan virus. It's like a Trojan virus. Now, I I remember we worked on a job about 25 years ago. And there was this guy. He was pretty... You know, he was just a normal guy. And he picked up this hitchhiker and he said she was from Africa. Right? And he slept with her. And I kid you not, that guy went mental. He went mental. 
I watched it with my own two eyes. Something happened to him that should not have ought to have happened, but it happened. By way of his transaction with that woman in sex. A lot of, a lot of the counselling and a lot of the coaching isn't educating people in the danger of sexual soul spirit transition and the corruption that can come with that now i keep today i'm talking about l-i-g-h-t limerence the initial the start of the relationship limerence well at the end of the relationship there's dark limerence and that's the part that tries to hang on to the other person even though you're trying not to by way of the soul and spirit connection there's this hope there's this um, limerence it's a dark limerence taking place at the end of the relationship like that of the start of the relationship only the start of the relationship the limerence is light at the end of the relationship the limerence is dark and this is the conflict this is the paradox because the limerence at the start of the relationship relatively blinds you to what's going on in the beginning but the dark limerence at the end of the relationship holds you into what possibly should you should let go. Limerence is the glue that binds you together independently to the person that you're with, that you've been with. Sometimes with earbuds, they, they come in a little thing and you plug the USB port into the earplug box and they sit in the box and they charge. Well, when you unplug that box, some of those boxes hold the charge. And that is what it's like with limerence. You've unplugged, but the limerence is still working to charge the earbuds. Mate, you are a legend. A legend. Unbelievable, that guy's about 70 year old and he's still a triathlon person. Anyway. You are still holding charge. The influence of that person is still working in your soul and mind deep inside the caverns and canals of your mind and spirit by way of the injection and the, the infusions that were taking place during sex. You were being programmed by the psyche of that person, right? And they wouldn't even know, look, most people don't even know this, to be one with that person in mind after unplugging from intercourse. And a lot of people get troubled and never come out of a breakup. Because the infusion of the soul and spirit of that other person is unable to be managed and deleted and waned off or weaned off by the person that's received it just by way of chemical makeup. And we take all this for granted. Even a psychopath, here, look, even a psychopath can fall prey to this. I'm telling you, somebody just comes along unbeknowns and they have sex with this person, a psychopath. And the psychopath goes away, not the same because the infusion between this particular person and the psychopath was more than the psychopath could handle.
That's how powerful sex is. And not even the psychopath could find his way out of it. And they're bulletproof. Nobody's safe when it comes to sex. That's what the Bible's trying to tell you. You're allowing yourself to become part of that other person. Oh, and we haven't even started. Really, we haven't. But anyone who is joined to the Lord is one in spirit with Him, and that's the key. When you have sexual intercourse with somebody, male to female, female to male, you are becoming one with all of that person, their mind, their way of thinking, the people that have been inside them before you or they went inside before you. That's where jealousy comes from and insecurity and the, the, the elements of um, intimidation and things because people don't know what was happening inside the person that you were with, what you took on and how that affected you. That's why a lot of people go back to their exes. Because they know the power they were receiving and how that chemical outcome, how that soul and spirit outcome, the ingredients of the two people together, how that was working for them. Some people, there's just nothing. It just didn't mean nothing. Other people, it's like dunamis, dynamite. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power when you stay and sleep with this person. There's people that meet that can just conquer life. There's people that meet and they just destroy everything around them. And many of you people are wondering why you can't break away from the soul tie. It's because you voluntarily, hopefully voluntarily I'm not going into rape and all that sort of thing, that's why it's a crime it's an intrusion, unsurpassed intrusion that may not be repairable but many of you people have voluntarily and this is where the dating sites are dangerous because the predators are using them the dark triad um, predators male and female are using them just for body count and for financial gain. It's all. And the damage that's being done is not being advertised on the media. There's been one or two cases here and there, really bad ones, but it's prolific. The damage and carnage that's being done through these sites is prolific, irreparable. And a lot of these people don't know the Lord. They don't know what's happening to them. And they're going home and wondering why they're hearing voices. Why all of a sudden they're sick. Why their mental health deteriorates. They may not have taken drugs. Now they're taking drugs. Why am I taking drugs? Ah, think about it. Because somebody in one of these intercourse sessions that they've had with the person that slept with them was a drug addict and now that influence is on them. So you can see why people find it very, very difficult to deprogram their way out. Particularly if there has been a voluntary um, infusion through sexual intercourse. Now, sexual intercourse is like a direct injection of the other person's soul and spirit. That's not to say time spent together and um, communication and all the other ways in which we bond. So I want you to think about how you dilute that. The key is here. Anyone who is joined to the Lord Jesus Christ 
is one in spirit with him. It's the Holy Spirit that will bring out the cleansing. Um, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, and thank you for joining me and listening today, Christ never sinned, but God treated him as a sinner so Christ could make us acceptable to God. He made him, he made Jesus who knew no sin, he knew no sin to be sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. God made Jesus who knew no sin to take my sin upon himself. All this stuff I'm talking about so that I could become the righteousness of God in him. Father, I pray for every listener, every person that's hurting right now. And I ask you to allow your Holy Spirit, the love, joy, the peace, the kindness, goodness, the faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, and all the fruit of the Spirit and everything that your Holy Spirit does to infuse us with the attributes of God to fall on every listener and every person around me and near me right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the way in which you heal us and restore us. Help us to be alcohol-free, drug-free, nicotine-free. Help us to be strong in mind, spirit, and heart. Help us to have sound boundaries and awareness of ourselves in a way in which we can conquer the life that we have left and love the people that we have that are important to us. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you'd like to speak to me personally, the contact information is in the description or on the YouTube front page. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison in New South Wales on the Central Coast, Australia. Bye for now.